Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast, and it's Finger Licking Good! <laughs> so it is. So it is. I see why you didn't let us in on that yeah. beforehand. Because I think, you know, we would have opposed it. Yeah, I would have, I would have been very cynical. Yeah. Uh, so it's a good thing you just avoided that entire... It's like, you know, right. cut out the peanut gallery. I want to do it, let's do it. We're going to do it. I don't want to have to second guess any of this. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dave. I'm Jason. Hey, I'm Justin. What well, we're doing it that way. I'm Jeremy. Apparently that's how we're doing it, because Jason just, just started going I with took that it. shit. I yeah. just took the floor. Ugh. Nope. This is mine. You you just seemed so you know enthusiastic with your. I'm Dave, so I yeah. was just I was just you went with it. Yeah. I was there. Cool. I, I got a little confused because I I'm pretty sure his name's Jeremy Adam. Yes, yeah, Jeremy Adam. Jeremy he's, Adam. I don't know why he's just saying. Yeah. Jeremy. I mean, what did he say? What did he say his name was? It's just it's Jeremy. Jeremy it's Adam. It, uh, <laughs> but see now no see you got to pronounce it right. The, it's a hard Y. It's not Jeremy Adam. It's Jeremy Adam. <laughs> Almost like Madam. Right, Jeremy Adam. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like a like if a a f- cat madam. Like yeah. a Jeremy Me Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Me Adam. Like that. No, yeah, that's anyway. wrong too. Uh so uh on our last show we talked about the um Elon Musk making the flamethrowers. That's true. And now it turns out sold out. Sold out of them. Sold out of flamethrowers. It's actually like very soon after we recorded that, yeah. it uh, sold out. Yeah. And is that a coincidence? Yes. <laughs> You're welcome, Elon. Yeah. Um, Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, yeah. <laughs> but we still haven't tried getting in contact with him, you know? No, but... He might have some kind of a pity fund. Well, I think I think he's planning on making a lot of, you know, really crazy energy weapons for the for the mass market. You know, yeah. I think there's something about a lightning thrower. Someone tweeted him, like, a like an ice thrower for Australia, and he's like, that's not a bad idea. So, we might get one of those Why soon. Why does Australia need an ice thrower? Because it's hot. I will say this. I mean, Elon sometimes. Musk stays true to his tweets. He does. <laughs> he came up with a hat and he said, next the flamethrower. And everyone called bullshit. And then he released a flamethrower. Yep. He says an ice thrower is a good idea in Australia. He's probably working on it. <laughs> I'm legitimately thinking about an ice thrower being good in a lot of places. Like, now mm. that's a party that doesn't... <laughs> necessarily burn down the forest and this one you can <laughs> use on your friends yeah <laughs> to an extent you know you I don't want to frostbite their hand off while they're sleeping you mentioned party and i thought that would be great like yo this drink needs some more ice exactly. i got my ice thrower <laughs> Ka-punk. Mm-hmm. i mean i'm just thinking like like a fire extinguisher it's mm-hmm. just yeah. like the like, roof the roof the roof is on fire don't worry we've got compressed an ice thrower. gas of some kind so yeah. you know, yeah. you just, you know i wonder if it'll out. be at all similar to a fire extinguisher um I think it can be like a fire extinguisher but more fun yeah a fun extinguisher like that you, you don't could, have you could fire extinguisher. Extinguisher. a fire extinguisher that you could chill a six pack of beer in <laughs> under 30 seconds yeah. from across the room from across <laughs> the room <laughs> And also potentially, uh, you know, so would freeze this, your friend's hand off. And then, you know, off. make Arnold Schwarzenegger carry would it around this have and the ten ruin feet people's limit? childhood. What? Would this have the 10 feet limit? Uh, or could he go farther than the 10 feet because it's not fire? The, you probably, there's probably not a regulation on that. No. All I know is anybody who gets one has to have some really hokey, punny lines like Arnold <laughs> did. Yeah. And everybody chill. Everybody chill. Yeah. It's cold as ice. I remember seeing that movie with my dad and my brother and coming out of it going like, that was awful. And I was a child. I remember seeing that movie as a child and thinking, that's amazing. (laughs) Let's keep watching it. And I watched it several, several times to a point that I know a good majority of the lines just from like memory from my childhood. Mm -hmm. I watched all of the Batman movies in sequence. uh, All of the... Tim Burton, Joel Schumacher Batmans, yeah. probably about three or four weeks ago. Wow. Whew, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bad movie. But it's a bad, it's so bad that it's almost good. Yeah. But for me, like... It's, it's awesomely bad. And nostalgia really? kicks in a little bit for yeah. me as well. You know, I saw it as a kid, watched it a ton as a kid. Mm. First movie ever got stuck in my VCR. and <laughs> Really? It wasn't a porn? No, no, no. no. It was Good. Batman. <laughs> um, but it was like going back and watching, like it's just, it's so over the top and hokey. Like you can't, yeah. 
you can't take it seriously. And then it kind of feels like they stop taking themselves seriously after a while. Like right after the opening credits? Yeah, and then George Clooney is Batman. That was a mistake. I want to go on record and say I'm a big fan of George Clooney. Absolutely. Fantastic actor. Fantastic actor. I watched all the Oceans movie recently. I've had a lot of free time. Yeah. Um, but they're making another one. They, yeah, they're making the Oceans, Oceans 8, 8 with Look all up. female heist. That's right. Yeah, that's going to be really, really good. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling. But George Clooney, great actor. Um, not the greatest Batman, and somehow an even worse Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like a lot of Batman, yeah. you have... Some are better at Batman, yeah. not as good at Bruce Wayne. Some are better at Bruce Wayne, not as good at Batman. Yeah. Like, I look at Christian Bale's Batman. Mm-hmm. Spectacular Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. Batman was me, so so. Okay. I look at Val Kilmer. Mm-hmm. Val Kilmer, terrible Batman, but also a terrible Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Keaton was, I thought, one of the best Batman. Mm-hmm. His Bruce Wayne wasn't bad. It mm-hmm. just it didn't evoke the same kind of like. You didn't feel like it was Bruce Wayne the way you did with Christian Bale. He didn't have that billionaire philanthropist playboy feel to him in the same way that Christian Bale did. Mm -hmm. Um, George Clooney just like he he stayed that's he stayed straight the entire time. He was just George Clooney. He was George Clooney. (laughs) You know, you have uh, Michael Keaton who's like, you know, hi, I'm 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 Bruce Wayne and I'm I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Val Kilmer, uh, I'm Bruce Wayne. I'm Batman. George Clooney I'm Bruce Wayne. I'm Batman. <laughs> the voice is just flat the yeah. entire time. Anybody who works with both Bruce, Bruce Wayne and Batman who don't know they're the same person is not an intelligent person. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to George Clooney. When it comes to George Clooney. Yeah. And Batman movies. Mm. Mm. So I don't have a good segue for this, so I'm just going to just jump into something totally different. Great segue. Um, I recently put my phone my cell phone number on the national do not call list which does nothing <laughs> um, because I'm still getting telemarketer calls of course and but now I can go like here's what happened so I got a call a, a couple weeks ago um, random number I didn't know it was a local cell phone number to the town where I got my cell phone so like same area code same prefix mm-hmm. I know it was from like it was a cell phone number at one point uh, I answer it, it was an automated message, and I'm like, this is bullshit, but I got time. So I waited for it to be like, to talk to a person, do this thing. And I hit the button, and I got a person. And I said, hey, you know, they start going on their spiel about, you wanted to do this thing, right? And I'm like, no, I don't. My number is on the National Do Not Call Registry. Why are you calling me? And then he said, shut up. <laughs> he said what? Shut up. Shut up. And I said, what? And he said, shut up. I said, are you telling me to shut up? Yes, shut up. Shut up. And they hung up on me. And I was just flabbergasted. (laughs) Well, I guess the way they see it is like, you're on the do not call list. You're not going to order whatever product I'm doing. (laughs) Fuck this guy. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah. I've been getting those phone calls too. They're really random. They come from the same area code. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing because it's come from like six or seven different phone numbers, but it's the same message. Yeah. And they get you. They're is sneaky. It, is it card services? Nope. Oh, that's what mine is. No, I, I, I normally get two. I normally get an alarm service uh-huh. or a uh, resort. Okay. So it's like... I do get the resort sometimes. Yeah. Like, hello? Hi, my name is Jessica. <laughs> um, we saw that you recently stayed at one of our resorts, mm-hmm. and you qualify for a special rate. Which first, Jessica? Off, Jessica no, I no, fucking didn't. Jessica, no, I no, I don't. So, in order to redeem, the, oh, right, you're fake. Yeah, yeah. Call but up. See, I have more time on my hands, yeah. and so so it happened again this weekend. We we had accident. We had the LARP that we do, and I was driving there. And I got a call from one of these numbers again. Mm. And I'm on the road. I definitely have time on my hands. <laughs> and and same deal. Uh, we're calling from card services. It doesn't say a credit card company or a bank or anything. It just says card services, so you know it's fake. You need to call us about recent activity yeah. on your credit or it's card. Like, you could have your interest rate dro- dropped or something like that. Some bullshit. And so I hit the button, and this woman comes on and says, Hi, how are you? I was like, oh, I'm good. How are you? She goes, good. So you're... You're uh, interested in this thing? Like, no, actually, my number's on the National Do Call Registry, and I want to know why you're calling me. What? (laughs) 
I said my my number is on the National Do Not Call Registry. I just want to know why you're calling me. And then silence. And then a man comes on. He goes, so you want to get your interest rate lowered, right? I was like, no, my number is on the National Do Not Call Registry. Why are you calling me? And he goes, yeah, my dick is on the National Do Not Call <laughs> Registry. <laughs> and again, I'm taken aback. <laughs> I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> wow. And it just becomes like he's just yelling obscenities at me. And then I was like, really? Was, oh, yeah, really? And so it's like this mocking voice tone. And I was like, lose my fucking number. And I hung up on him. And I was I can't believe this shit happens in real life. I, I, I found something out recently, though, that um, those telemarketers and stuff that call you, mm -hmm. unless you are, like, overtly, like, rude and, like, use, being threatening or using obscenities or anything yep. like that, they have to stay on the line with you. So if you wait for them to come on and you don't, if it's the same <laughs> card service and don't say that you're on the national call registry, yeah. you can just start ruining these people's days oh, with yeah. some ridiculous bullshit. And I think you should. I might start. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I, I think like, there's Talk about like that. shitting in their mailbox or something <laughs> like that. Be like, what's your address? I think I just shit in your mailbox. <laughs> just anything to really rub them yeah. weird. The worst thing is, like, there's no way to, to, like, get them in trouble for what they're doing. Like, no. I can call back that number. It just says the number doesn't work. And so, like, it's, it's obviously they use that number, like, once and then drop it immediately or however it works because I'm connecting to a different number when I hit the button. Yeah. And then I'm talking to another person. And so it really irritates me that there's nothing to be done about it. Like, it's just going to keep happening. I'm just going to keep dealing with these people with accents who... Tell me that their dick is on the Do Not Call Registry. Um, Why don't you just, you know, wait for the person to pick up the phone mm -hmm. and then say fuck you and hang up every <laughs> single time? I mean, I could, but then it's not really wasting their time. No. And that's what I want to do at this All right. point. Especially Here we if go. they're like commission sales. Like, you want to try and pull up as much of their time yeah. as possible. Like, so make them regret. I want them on the they... phone with me for like hours. Yeah. So, what, so what you need to do, yeah. all right, is you need to... Pick up one of these calls, mm. all right? Go through the whole spiel like you're interested. Yeah. Kind of learn what their spiel is. What kind of questions they ask you. How do they lead you in there? Mm. And I need you to take notes. And write <laughs> down, write down like specific <laughs> responses. Yeah. And then I want you to record all of your responses in time. And then the next time they call, you just troll the shit out of them with a recording <laughs> that ends with you talking about shitting in their mailbox. <laughs> or when they call, mm -hmm. you just... When, as soon as you get that person, you just play the B-movie script. <laughs> That's it. They can't Why do you up. think I have that? Well, you get it. Then they can't hang up. They have to listen it. to the B-movie script. Just just start like reciting lines back and forth with them. Be like, hey, were you interested in, uh, in updating your interest rate? Now is the winter of our discontent. <laughs> <laughs> Made glorious summer by this son of York. Excuse me, sir. And all the clouds that have loud upon our house, and get them really confused. Yeah, I think that would be fun. I, I'm, you know what? I, I can't wait for one of them to call me again. I'm just getting excited. <laughs> yeah. You have any experience with that, Jason? No. All right. Actually, moving on. You don't get to uh, tell them everything <laughs> on your phone. I don't answer my phone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they rarely leave any kind of messages. Yeah, they only messages. Well, see, what what throws me off is because you know I've employees and sometimes I don't have their numbers saved mm -hmm. so if it has a local area code I'm gonna pick it up just just in case it could be anybody like hello like is there emergency is somebody dying I don't know hello yeah oh. that's when they get you it's the same area code and they're like this is Jessica <laughs> Jessica you're a bitch <laughs> I don't know why you took that job but you're a bitch Jessica hey, hello Jessica yeah I don't know. I would call. I, mean, I would talk to them, mm. I think, if, if I did answer. But I just don't answer. Like, like I, I know... When, when I see that number, I'm like, I know that I don't know this person. This is a telemarketer. And I could not answer it. Or I can see what happens when I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... You know, back when I lived here, mm. uh, just outside the studio... I uh, I kept some Jehovah's Witnesses like outside the front door for at least a good 45, 50 minutes before they excused themselves. Really? Because they had some more important stuff to do. <laughs> like, uh, 
<laughs> so how did you manage that? How did that just, play out? Just talking to them about, you know, like the the semantics of their specific form of Christianity and you know, my grandmother was a witness and so I have a little bit of experience and I know that there's absolutely no way that they would reform me into their religion, but still like <laughs> They don't know that. Like they they <laughs> took the time to come to my home, so yeah. I figure I might as well, you know, get a little bit of like, how do you really feel kind yeah. of scenario. See, like, I would have played it differently. I would have like answered the door and said, you know, like, hey, how's it going? And they would start to just feel like, all right, cool. Give them like two or three minutes to be like, oh, hold on one second. I'll be right back. Go inside, close the door, see how long they stand out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do it. I always feel like how long do they these... wait for me? Politely wait for me to come back from doing whatever it is I was doing. Yeah. See, with, with yeah, these but... telemarketers and like their and their obvious scams, I have no remorse. Like I'll fuck with them, and I've done that in the past. I... But for, for people like Jehovah's Witnesses, <laughs> right? Stuff, like, like I feel like that's not the same level. No, though. and no. and I remember there were times where uh, I would get calls from like alumni services from the school from Georgia Southern where I graduated from. And they would be like, hey, you know, this is whatever from Georgia Southern, and we're calling from alumni services, and we want to tell you everything that's going on at Georgia Southern now. Like, this person's going to ask me for money. I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been times where I'll be like, listen, I know what you're doing, and I appreciate it, and I understand that you are reading from a script and all this stuff, but I'm not giving you any money. I, I work in a restaurant. I live paycheck to paycheck. I have no money to give you none i'm sorry if you need to go through your script we can do that and just assume that i'm saying no to everything no. but the I education you provided up. me yeah. has done nothing like welcome to georgia <laughs> Southern. i'm a sponsor yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i think at one point i even told like at one point they got me at a bad time and i was like listen i gave them so many thousands of dollars just to go there that's all you get <laughs> <laughs> But then I felt bad about it. Like this, this is just some kid doing it. Although they have lied to me, they've lied straight to my ear face. <laughs> my ear face. And right on your ear face. Yeah. Where, wow, where it's been like, uh, oh, what was your major when you were there? I was in broadcasting. I'm in broadcasting. No, you're fucking not. You liar. <laughs> Do you have any advice for me? You don't care. Why are you asking me this shit? You just want me to give you money. I'll do whatever you want know. if you give me some money. <laughs> I think it'd be fun to like. I'll pick up a second major. Yeah. <laughs> play a uh, play some kind of a super fan or whatever, you know, and just start like hooping and hollering <laughs> like you're at a game yeah. and asking them stats about specific <laughs> like, you know, like oh you remember seven games ago when Henderson got that you know 400 yards rushing and they're like <laughs> yeah yeah Henderson doesn't play for this team. <laughs> Harrison's a wide receiver, guy. Yeah, don't. you don't know shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck him with people. <laughs> Should be a day job. Yeah. Ashton Kutcher did it for a while. He did, yeah. and he was mildly successful at it. <laughs> he was. And that show went on for several years. Too long. What was the first one? Candid Camera? Was that the first one? The first punked? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think Smile, like you're on Candid the Camera. First. Kind of reality. Just like a dude in a trash yeah. can on, the, on like the New York subway. Yeah. Like, watch this guy get slapped by this lady. Ah! <laughs> oh, he did. He got slapped. But See, now now, have... I, I think some of those, like, they go too far and they've made it obvious now. Like, um, uh, impractical jokers. Mm hmm. I would recognize one of those dudes a mile away. So if yeah. I saw one of these guys doing some sort of ridiculous shit that they do, I'd be like, do I want to be on TV? Yeah. yeah well, I think wanna... that's the case. You see that a lot, too, where, where people are like, you know, so, just some ridiculous thing going on. Like, am I on a fucking reality TV show right now? Like, what is going on? But I you, feel like you get that on not... social media a lot. Like, I saw a video today where um, some dude was sitting on a bus and there were some people behind him. And then they started pretending to get into a fight. And then one dude literally punches the other dude's head off. Like, the yeah. head just fucking goes flying. And then the guy in front was like, yeah! like started yeah. like losing his mind, like you have to know that's not real. Yeah, <laughs> you have to know. I that's saw not real. I saw another one very similar to that where it was like uh, it was this, there was this magician that I've seen on Facebook several times, and he oh, gets in an argument guy. with a girl, mm, that's all that and one. then like and go like throws a, a towel over her head and then takes her head off, and it's just a body with no head, 
and and people flip out about it. like clearly clearly this is not real people <laughs> it's and magic it, and it's not like oh oh okay it's not real it, like people flip out for an extended period of time like, like grabbing on to people like yeah. oh it's ridiculous devils are real my grandma <laughs> told me this day would come <laughs> i feel like the same people that fall for those types of magic tricks mm. are the same people that fall for the telemarketer spiels probably yeah did i stay at a resort <laughs> I earned what? <laughs> really? Yeah, connect Tell me. me more, honey, Jessica. honey, they're saying we're going to get a discount on a resort. Really? <laughs> Just my credit card number? <laughs> and the authorization code? The CVV? Yeah, I got it all right here. Same people. Yeah. Some people are dumb. Yeah, I feel like I'm being overly critical, though. I'm sorry, guys. Nah. Huh? <laughs> I just can't really relate. Yeah. To, to Jessica. Well, let's talk about something you can relate to. Altered Carbon. Yeah? We spend a lot of time talking about Netflix television shows mm -hmm. on this program, and there's one that came out recently by the name of Altered Carbon. It looks really good. I've seen some of it when my roommates were watching it. I haven't watched it yet, but it looks amazing. I've watched the whole series. Have the you? whole series. Yeah. whole series? Yeah. What about you, Jeremy Adam? I Jeremy Adam, not. sorry, I mispronounced it. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> Jeremy Adam. I Jeremy have not Adam. started, but I want to. Yeah. All right, well, without spoiling anything, and I'm sure Jason can pitch in on this, yeah. um, it is like Blade Runner mm. in a fever dream <laughs> with, like, you're on acid all the same time, rolled up into a ball, but it is a blast. Yeah. yeah. It is a lot of fun. It's a good I, show. It's set in the the hyper future. Mm. Um, basically, this guy that's like probably I would say probably maybe sixty to a hundred years in the future is like this, or uh, you know, honestly, I can't even because they're traveling like to different worlds, right. and stuff in this piece, and and so there's it's hyper future. Mm. But this this guy uh, from 250 years in the past. Yeah, 250 years in the past from this hyper future. Mm -hmm. He basically has a deck in his head, and mm -hmm. everybody has a deck in their head that they got from some kind of an alien technology. They never really even get into it. Yeah. They just like, boom, it happened, go with it. And so everybody just wears a suit mm -hmm. as like their their skin or whatever their sleeve yeah they're, they're like all the physical body is called a sleeve so every person is like contained in this little disc it's like their consciousness yeah, yeah. They, they they call it a stack mm -hmm. so if you die you don't actually die they can just take your stack and put it into a new sleeve or a mm -hmm. new body and whoop, there you are okay. the only way to kill a person is to destroy their stack okay uh, and so, from that premise, basically, this guy from the past who has, like, a a very, you know, interesting history that they get into, of course, as they go through the show, uh, he winds up getting put to sleep for these 250 years and woken up for a very specific purpose, which is the main story arc. Um, to solve a murder, essentially, is yeah. what yeah. I understand. It's apparently, like, if you mix Demolition Man with... Um, Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. Yes. What I've heard. Yeah. I mean, it definitely borrows a lot from, like, things like Blade Runner and stuff. Like, just mm -hmm. the way that they represent the, this hyper-future, it's... There's a lot of very familiar elements, so mm -hmm. it doesn't... There's not a whole bunch of stuff to learn. You just have to basically learn their terminology and see what they're doing. You know, like, they all have, you know, the, the eye implants mm -hmm. and the, the head telephones and everything. You just have to know that they call it an Oni or whatever, so right. that's what they're talking about and gotcha. things like that. So they're familiar concepts. Um, it's very psychedelic imagery at times, um, and they definitely use like hallucinations and dream sequences and stuff like that to like further it. Mm -hmm. But even in you know the real world, it's still very colorful, yep. very dynamic, um, and honestly, knowing that it's a Netflix original series, like this is a TV show, right? It has the budget of a blockbuster. Oh yeah, like the the Netflix has the money to do all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, I mean they've they've been doing it with they did it with um, Altered Carbon. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been several shows. Um, oh, it's escaping me right now. 
The Marvel shows are good ones. Mm-hmm. That, that yeah, they, the they, Defenders they, series. The Defenders. Yeah. What was one they came out with really recently? The, there was the Travelers. Bright. I know we like the, the Travelers. Travelers. Bright. Mm. Um, well, apparently Bright. Uh, Stranger say, Things. Like they, yeah. they put a lot of money in these things and it shows. It doesn't feel like you're watching a TV show. Mm. It feels like you're watching a movie, which is why I sat down to watch it one morning at 9 a.m., and before I knew it, it was like three o'clock in the afternoon, and I'd almost watched the whole series. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to pause for a second, right. and come back to this so I can enjoy it. But now, I don't know a whole lot about this show, but I do know that one of my favorite actresses is in it, uh, Daichin Lockman, uh, who is the she is, I believe she's Asian Australian. Okay. Um, she's got like she typically has like blonde hair, this beautiful Asian girl, but she's been in a like she usually plays smaller parts, like um, really like thin, sharp framed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, she. Uh, the first time I saw her was in Dollhouse, which was one of Joss Whedon's older shows. Uh, she was on uh, Agents of Shield for a while. Yeah. Um, she was in uh, Torchwood at one point, mm. and and I, now I know she's in this show. But she's I I think she's fantastic every time yeah. I see her, and she's gorgeous. I mean, on, so. honestly, there are only two actors in the show that I could give you their name and tell you things that they've been in. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it still feels high quality. Joel Kinnaman plays. Um, What's his name? Uh, Takashi, Takashi Kovach is what his name is. Okay. Um, he was in RoboCop. He played RoboCop. He was in that uh, show, The Killing. Yes. Um, he's a really, really good actor, and he plays it very well. And he's strong in this role. Very oh. strong in the role. And like in the, in the Killing, he was the bad guy in the Killing, right? Is that what we're talking about? No, no, no. He was or, the partner. no. I'm thinking the following. Yeah, he which was is the, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon was the the cop in the following, but the bad guy in the following was was in Alter Carbon. He's the guy who hires James per- Purefoy. Sure, yes. Is it James Purefoy in uh, the following? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but James Purefoy plays the uh, the mega rich guy who brings him back to life yeah. to solve his own murder. It's well worth the watch. Yeah. It's just ten short hours of your time. <laughs> Um, they, yeah, it's worth a watch. Another worth a watch, Black Panther. <sighs> yeah, holy crap! Go I've, see heard, I've heard, I've heard nothing. It, go see it. I've heard it's nothing so but wonderful good. things. Yeah. I've heard, nothing. I've heard a lot of great things. Yeah, uh, want Wakanda life forever. Yep. <laughs> Hashtag Wakanda life. Yeah, yeah. It was really just over the top good. There, were, there was characters in there, like there was actors in there I didn't realize I knew, like um. I know uh, the uh, girl that plays Michonne yep. in Walking Dead. I did not realize that's who I was looking at because she is so different in this role. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, like, the, the one girl, badass, uh, the, the one girl from uh, Twelve Years a Slave, is in there too, isn't yep. she? Mm-hmm. Um, Lupita, I can't remember her name. I, um, I'm terrible with names. But, but see, like one of the things that I think is really cool about it, and I haven't watched it yet, but just you know, gathering feedback from social media and seeing mm-hmm. what like the response is to it is, it's a movie that's really appealing to the masses as a whole yeah but it's also like having a very um defined Mm -hmm. like cultural message yeah directed at specific demographic specific demographics namely african-americans that they're really feeling in touch with and they're like they appreciate the the cultural significance that it's bringing and highlighting but at the same time it's just a great movie that everybody's enjoying. So it's like cultural and it's bringing up topics for people to discuss and it's bringing folks to these things. But yeah. it's and also not, just a really just, cool blockbuster. Not just African Americans, but Africans of all nationalities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, it also, <laughs> apparently, it has done so well in the first four days, it grossed more than Justice League did in its entire run. I believe it. I mean, so, it's, it, it's a Tuesday. Leave, night. It, leave it to superhero movies yeah. to, to uplift. The the oppressed, you yeah. know. I mean, Wonder Woman <laughs> mm-hmm. like made a lot of headway oh, for yeah. females uh, in directing and in lead action roles, and yep. and, I, and I, now we're seeing like boom, like a mostly black action cast can oh, kill yeah. it, yeah. and it's great. It's it's really really cool. I mean, it, just to you know piggyback on how popular it is. This it, we're filming this on a Tuesday night. This is Tuesday, yeah, in Georgia. I had, uh, like, my girlfriend went to go see it tonight, hmm. and it's sold out. Yeah. Like, 8 o'clock, 8.30 <laughs> on a Tuesday. On a it's Tuesday. On a Tuesday. <laughs> and it's sold out. Yeah. Like, I want to see it. I just don't know when the hell I'm going to get a chance to. 
Yeah, I was lucky to see it when I did on uh, the Thursday. You're that it damn came right, out. you're lucky. Because uh, I bought my tickets online like several hours before, and uh, smart. And even when we when we got in there, there was very few seats left because we got there right as the the uh, trailers were playing, and so we were lucky. Like my girlfriend and I were lucky to actually get to sit together. Because there were so few seats there. Um, I think that's why a lot of theaters are going with the assigned seating. Like, whenever you buy your ticket, you yeah. have to choose your seat. Which I I like and I don't like it, but... I like it for movies like that, where mm-hmm. you know it's going to be packed out. Let me go ahead and pick my spot, yeah. pick the next spot, make sure I can get a good spot with the people I'm with. If I'm going to see, you know, like, a matinee showing of a movie that's been running for six weeks, I, I want to I sit where I want. Yeah. I'm just going to pick a spot because you have all of the spots. Yeah. I'm going to pick one. Mm-hmm. Now, when, when we went, uh, we're, we're at the ticket counter to, to like, so my phone. So I was like, hey, I got these tickets already. And the, there's a girl behind us holding a baby. And we're like, I hope she's not going to our please movie. Don't go. Please, yeah, don't, please don't, don't go. Please don't go to our movie. movie. And then as we're walking by, we're like, uh, one for uh, Black Panther, please. Fuck. Um, but I noticed, like, this like she's got the blanket like over this baby's head like it's actually a giant bag of skittles and and (laughs) so that's what we were thinking like as we get inside we're like oh she's she's sneaking in candy and food and stuff they realize she has a giant purse so there's no reason to do that although i guess you know they'll check a purse but they won't check a baby right it's Um, one of those reservoir bags for backpacks filled with vodka (laughs) so we 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 get in there and we you know we get our popcorn and stuff we go sit in the movie she actually ends up sitting like two seats down from us and we find out it's not a baby it's not candy it's a puppy she brought a pup and when i say puppy i mean like weeks old oh like tiny puppy i love puppies into the movies to see black panther and in fact at some point during the during the show people were got kind of loud because it was exciting like it was near the end i think it was you know people were like ah and she was i have a puppy (laughs) <laughs> like, like we're supposed to be quiet for your damn puppy that you snuck into a movie guys I have a puppy here Yeah. so Rude after asses. the movie we're sitting around waiting for the after credit scenes because it's a superhero movie and of course there are some uh, two of them um, and we hear her ask the guy with her, her boyfriend I assume um, is Superman Marvel? and he has to explain to her that no Superman is in fact not a Marvel hero and then she goes, oh, okay. But well, Batman is, right? Wow, I'm glad it's a puppy and not a baby because you should not be reproducing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a mean thing to say. I mean, yeah, you know, just, just her first exposure. Yeah. Her first boyfriend and puppy combination. <laughs> and she's like... <laughs> because goodness knows if she's ever had a boyfriend or a puppy, <laughs> she would know the distinction between Marvel and DC. Right. Mm-hmm. That's, I believe that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not accurate? I felt like it was. I, yeah. That's why I said it. But yeah. So yeah, uh, ow, ow, full ow. circle, we began talking about Elon Musk. Yes. Uh, I think we Go should back to it. end up talking about Elon Musk. Okay. SpaceX. Yeah. Dead motherfucker launched a Tesla into space that yeah. has like a camera attached to it. His hmm. Tesla. His the one that he drove around. His yeah. cherry like red Tesla road. Thousand miles on it, <laughs> and he's Probably just like, "Fuck now. it, I got a new one on the lot. Yeah, throw this one into space. Yep. Let's see how far I can go." Man, only forty eight thousand miles. I would trade in my twenty seventeen Camry for it. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, only I have like ten. To be totally, fair, I made that it's probably up. got a lot more miles on it now. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it really, it's not that far of the moon. <laughs> <laughs> now, wasn't he? He was trying to shoot it to Mars. Yeah. That was the plan. I was under the impression, but it was overshot it. A slight overshooting, mm-hmm. and it's going to wind up going to the Oros cloud or whatever. The, really? or, the Ort cloud. The or, Ork. Ort. Ort. That's <clears throat> it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Ort cloud. We're all the the asteroid belt. Like, yeah. Yeah. I have not looked into this at all. Like I, I knew it happened, but I don't know. Now, is it going to be it, able but... to continue to relay a camera? I mean, it'll relay data for as long as it can. I mean, it can technically continue to relay data, just like the um, the Voyager is. Like the Voyager just passed Jupiter, Jupiter yeah. a couple weeks ago. We're getting those images back now. It just takes that much time for those images yeah. to get as to us. As long as there's power, it should be able to keep transmitting. Luckily, in the solar system, nothing's too terribly far away. So, mm. I mean, relatively. So it shouldn't take more than you know a couple of minutes or an hour or two for things to get back. But once you start getting Beyond that, 
Like once they get to the Oort cloud, it'll take you know days or weeks for a transmission to reach it back to Earth. Yeah. Now, is there a way to like uh, hyper propel trans transmissions and stuff like that? Like put a radio waves move at the the same speed. It's just frequency. You couldn't you couldn't drop like little like. Uh, amplifiers along your path. You or mean whatever. like you mean like the the, the Wi Fi extenders in your house? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like drop a few Wi Fi extenders. Yeah, this is will that, speed things is that up. Not something you can do. Oh, I think it would so. still it would still technically be moving at the same speed with yeah. or without those relays. In fact, that I think would only would only make it. It wouldn't change the speed, but it might change the quality. Yeah, it could change. The quality, it it yes. might help the quality w at the endpoint. Like a, this like is all collecting projection. points that then reproject or whatever, just yes. to give you more. I don't fucking know. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an IT. I just have ideas. <laughs> ideas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's it's really cool what he's been doing. He actually also coming back to Elon Musk. He actually just got uh, the Boring Company mm. just got um, the green light. To go ahead and start digging the tunnel for the Hyperloop in Washington D.C. Cool. Nice. Wow. So they are beginning to dig for the Hyperloop tunnel. I haven't starting heard Washington, anything about the belt buckle idea that we pitched. Which one was Still, this? Uh, like two, three weeks ago or whatever, yeah. we pitched a belt buckle idea. Uh, you know, uh, boring slash talkie box. Yeah. Belt buckles. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have a whole lot of of product. Mm -hmm. Uh, to offer, so we figured we would just do some joint advertising. Do some joint yeah. uh, advertising. You know, he's got the accessory for the for the flamethrower. Yep. The fire extinguisher. The boring yep. fire and extinguisher. So we were like, well, you we got to have an accessory for the hat. Right. And you know, eye patch would be pretty cool. <laughs> uh, you know, um, yeah. but uh, other With than the that, bought on it. The belt buckle. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, no, I mean, give it time. You still anything have it. can happen. Yeah. So Maybe contact start... the boring company and tell them that you you're looking for the belt buckle and the eye patch yeah. to we, accessorize. We should start tagging Elon Musk on Twitter and stuff like that. And see we really should. He might actually say something. Back. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've talked about him a lot. Active. We don't. We're not quite. Talk, we're fans. We're, we're fans of we Netflix. Are. We're fans of Elon Musk. I mean, yeah. what else do we fucking talk about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, MCU. Fucking love it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Disney. Uh, Marvel. Uh, everything. Elon Musk. Um, Netflix. I feel like just between those groups, mm -hmm. we ought to be able to get something. Yeah. Right? So I mean... Box set of Ultra Carbon Just or <laughs> four regular old white guys, they don't want us. <laughs> <laughs> they already have us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, fuck us then. <laughs> they won't do that either. No. <laughs> not even for like one billion dollars. Maybe. Do you have a billion dollars to give them for that? In market Maybe. value. Ah, <laughs> I've got twenty bucks. Um, trust me, you don't right, want any funds up to twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> twenty one. Do, do I hear twenty five? Twenty five. If no one's get, got that kind of money, we're just gonna wind up spending it on a flamethrower. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Anyway, so there was um, something else I wanted to bring up. Also, not a good segue. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Remakes, remasters. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think the the difference is between a remake and a remaster? And a remake, a remaster is the same thing, but made to look better, typically. Mm -hmm. And a remake is takes from the original source and usually does a different thing. Okay. Well, I figured like the remasters, they didn't just like make them look better; like they improved upon it to make. Make it like up to date. They use the same foundation. Yeah, they and just, then they build up it from they build it up from like, there. They well, make it for the current, you know, whatever it is. They make it play like it should belong on that, oh, rather than right. just like trying to, you know, do like a virtual thing. Like, oh yeah, I ported this here. Still mm -hmm. plays like the original. Still just as crappy. Just it looks better. Yeah. I mean, like I I, that, I look at like the Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Like they remastered the Star Wars, the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. What was it back in like the ninety five? 2000 something like that with some digital imagery and digital some, imagery they, put took out some of the the puppets brought in some more things yeah. and just like polished it, it up even, a little bit and with that they also added in some scenes they'd taken out it's mm -hmm. an increasing of production so yeah it's just yeah. improving the production then like remakes where they're just I've, i'd say it's a little remake. bit more than a remaster though because like mm -hmm. you're you're not like I, I still feel like a remaster is 
the sa- the exact same thing except brought into today's technology standards. Yeah. Whereas with what they did with Star Wars is it was the same thing brought into today's standards with some more to it. Yeah. And that I appreciate. But when it comes to when they when they remaster games like they did with Skyrim and stuff like that, like if it's not if you aren't adding any any content, I I typically don't care. Now see, like you bring up an interesting point. So I want to talk about two games that got remastered and just like the difference between the remastering. Like, yeah. Skyrim's a great one. Skyrim came out in 2011. Mm-hmm. I believe it was 11, 11, 11, wasn't yeah. it? It was. It was still buggy and they just wanted to make it cool. They just wanted to get it out there. Came out, great game, yeah. gorgeous game, you know, critically renowned, everything. Uh, and then they remastered it and ported it to the PS4, mm. where what you're basically getting is just improved graphics where you get the um oh, what's it called like the tracing is that what it's called i don't know what we're talking about where you can see further and oh, further render distance yeah render distance okay. where like you the rendering you can see more of the details of the trees and the hills and the water further out than you could before okay. and you're not having stuff like pop up magically as you're walking yeah. towards it kind of actually fades in um god rays and water and stuff like that it just looks a little bit better than what it did Mm-hmm. That's all they really did. But then there's a remaster of a game called Shadow of the Colossus, right. which I picked up recently. Shadow of the Colossus came out, I want to say, in like 2004 mm-hmm. on the PlayStation 2. Yeah. Amazing game. Like, 2004, like, it was one of those games that actually pushed the argument of video games as art. You know, yeah. like... Are video games art? Well, here, take a look at Shadow of the Colossus and tell me that they're not. Which, on the PS2, gorgeous game. Gort, like, one of, probably one of the, the best graphic, graphically game, probably one of the best games graphically on the PlayStation 2 mm. of its time. Yeah. They remastered it for the PlayStation 4. I picked it up, and it's mind-boggling yeah. how gorgeous it is. Like, the details that they put in there... And, like, they didn't really... They added a few things and had just, like, tiny little tweaks and stuff to it, but they reskinned everything. They retextured mm. everything, remastered the sound, remastered... The, like, everything is so much better and, like, up to a different level. Yeah. But at the same time, like, going through it, some of, like, the motions and stuff are still just like it was back in the PlayStation 2. You Like, you know, like, the, like the polygon clipping that sometimes the... Yeah. The characters will do like, you know, they lift their arm up, but you're not getting any of this shoulder or anything. It's just like, this thing is now facing this direction. It right. just kind of overlaps. Mm-hmm. You still get some of that in there where it still feels like kind of like a polygon character, only everything's gorgeous. Okay. But it's well worth a play. I see. Um, with, with Shadow of Colossus, I would be okay with a remaster for a couple of reasons. One being, I didn't actually finish the game originally. Oh. Um, and another being... That game was a whole other generation that got to play that game. Like, not just of the system, but, like, of the people playing it. Mm-hmm. That was something that, that came out when when I was in my early 20s. And now I'm in my mid-30s. There are kids today who have no idea what that is. Oh, no, yeah. And so I can see a remastering of that. Like, here's this amazing game, and now it looks awesome on the system that you have because you clearly don't have a PS2 because it's hard to find those now. Yep. And you definitely don't have a memory card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, like, it, it's a gorgeous game, and I thought it was, like, very well done mm-hmm. in the remastery, worth the 40 bucks that it cost to pick it up just because it's such a beautiful artistic yeah. game. But my issue with, like, a Skyrim remaster is because everyone remembers when that came out very not that long ago, mm-hmm. and, and most people played it. Most people wanted to play that game, already played it. Yep. There's no reason, I feel that there was no reason... To then go remaster it and like, here's the same game for the same price, buy it again with this better look. Now, actually, I was a proponent of the Skyrim remaster for mm-hmm. a few reasons. One, you know, PlayStation 3, it's aging now. Yeah. My PlayStation 3 was dying a little bit, but that was beside the point. You know, like, I had a PlayStation 4. I wanted to play it with better graphics because it has, you know, a higher, uh, you know, graphics capacity. You know, the PlayStation 3 was 720p. Yeah. You could get 1080 if you're really lucky on the PlayStation 4. It's base 1080p. But they also made improvements to um, load times. One of the biggest critiques that people had for Skyrim on the PlayStation 3 was 
the load screens were forever. It took some time. They, were yeah, they took brutal. a long time. When they were coming out with the remaster, they're like, you know, if you put the PlayStation 4's power with Skyrim, mm. you could eliminate load screens altogether. Like, if you took just the base game from the PlayStation 3 and put on the PlayStation 4, there would be no load screens. Yeah. The, it has that much processing power. They upped it up, they, you know, they, they fancied it up a little bit, so there are still load screens, but they're a quarter right. of the length that they were. And yeah. you just have the ability to play it on a better, more capable system while you know getting slight performance improvements. Your frame rate's improving, and the, the clipping improves, and the rendering distance, and things like yeah. that. So it just it feels more like a smooth experience that it did, but it's the difference between like stripping it down and rebuilding it and reskinning it like Shadow of Colossus. Right. Whereas with Skyrim, they basically just like <laughs> polish that up real yeah. good. Yeah. Now here's I, I understand people wanting a, an updated version of Skyrim. I get it. It does look beautiful. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it doesn't. But I think here's my compromise. If you already purchased Skyrim at the full price and had like you put in a code or something, like this is my disc, I put I feel with the remaster, if you have a PS4, they should give it to you for free. Or at a very discounted rate. Like discounted, I would say. 10 15 bucks max. The, the labor hours and stuff like that into the going to the remaster, they they would not yeah. make very much money. They would lose money. But if you gave it a discount... Yeah. Man, that but like, to spend 60 or whatever dollars on it when it first came out and then have to spend it again to get... still It's still the same game. Yeah. It's still and, and that's one of the issues that I did take is that... Skyrim, when it was remastered, was sixty dollars mm -hmm. for the remaster. Shadow of Colossus, forty dollars. They're like, this is a remake. Yeah, here, forty bucks. Remaster, same, remaster. Yeah. Uh, same thing with the Crash Bandicoot trilogy. Mm -hmm. I got that on PlayStation mm -hmm. Four as well. Phenomenal. Like you want to talk about graphical improvements? It's pff, staggering. They rub it in your face at the beginning of the game, where they show you like the old graphics, and then All they right. put it through a machine and show the new graphics. They like, look how good it looks. <laughs> but it's. If they forty bucks, yeah. like it's a brand new game, but dude, you could have played this game fucking twenty years ago. Here, forty bucks. Yeah. And then there were some people who did, or some things that would like if you had the older version. Mm -hmm. Like I know on Steam when the uh, Bioshock collection came out, if you had any of the old Bioshocks in your library, you would automatically get the uh, remastered version. Awesome. Like I had the first one, and I'm just checking my library, and it says Bioshock remastered, and I'm like, oh. No, see, okay, that's a nice cool. touch. That's a yeah. nice touch. Like, I can't play it. My computer can't run that. But uh, <laughs> it's nice to know I got yeah. it. If you ever update your computer, yeah. you, got, you, go. you got a good game. So, like, that was pretty cool. But that was another one that they did the remasters of, Bioshocks and stuff, which that kind of skirts the line because the, the first Bioshock did come out, you know, quite a while back. Was that... Seven or eight. 2007 What, or eight, what yeah. system was that on? With PlayStation 3. Xbox. That was on the... Okay, on the yeah. 360. So that was, that was one of the earlier... Games for those for that yes. generation of the system, mm -hmm. so I can sort of get that one being remastered, and and kind of be okay with it. Still not really because it's again it's still the same game. Yep. See what what I what I find staggering is like the the rate at which technology is advancing. Like mm -hmm. when the PlayStation Three came out, I remember like seeing that whole keynote thing. I'm like wow, oh, yeah. that looks amazing. And they showed uh, a preview. They showed like one of those extended preview interaction things with that game, Heavenly Sword. Okay. Um, and when it came out, like this was like a graphic powerhouse. Like her hair moves, and look how fast things are, and how smooth and fluid it is. Yeah. I went back and I like was like watching trailers and stuff like that, and like it is severely dated. Like those <laughs> things that like amazed me. Yeah. When it was coming out, now we take for granted. Like a character's hair moving with them, mm -hmm. like, it's 2018. If a character's hair doesn't move, yeah. it looks like blocks. Wrong. It looks like it's wrong. Right. But when that came out, you're coming out of the PlayStation 1 and Final Fantasy where their headpiece kind of just like, their hair yeah. is, <laughs> if they have long hair that comes down their back and they look down, well, their hair's sticking out like that. <laughs> yeah. But we're, we take it for granted and we go back and look at it it's like, Ugh. Which at the time we shit, thought was a, At the time we thought was amazing. I remember when the PS2 came out, and suddenly there was actual footage in games because it was a, it was a DVD player essentially, mm -hmm. and and that was an amazing achievement. And you could actually get more and more like actual voiceovers mm -hmm. instead of subtitles. You were actually getting voiceovers, yeah. and it just it breathed life into the game. And, and then yeah. PlayStation and, Three kicked it up a notch and like 
gave all of those tiny little processors things to do like hair and wind and rain right. and stuff like that and it breathed that much more life into it and PlayStation 4 and Xbox and so forth they're doing the same thing where you know you have fog yeah. when you're walking around that moves around with you and you have little tiny rocks and dust falling when you're mm -hmm. wa rock walking through a cave and it just it helps with the immersion and it makes it so much better when you go back you're like god I feel like I'm playing yeah. video games in a cave and then 15 years from now we're going to look at that stuff and be like this is shit oh yeah <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll look at, at Fallout 4 in five years and be like, what the fuck? This is terrible. <laughs> the kids yeah. are playing uh, the Monster Hunter World. Oh, I've heard good things. No, I don't know about that one. Very uh, good. Have yeah. you played it? Yes, I... I you must um, be one of these kids I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I haven't... Uh, I played the demo and I hated it. Really? Um, <laughs> But it was it was like a very rudimentary early on demo and well, so see like, that's the thing about Monster Hunter is at its best the tutorial is non existent. So like it throws you in. Like, I think you are the not demo going... is technically the tutorial. Yeah. Because it's like just Like you are not gonna like they'll give you all these weapons, you know, each weapon plays differently, it's got different feels to it, you know, different effects. You have to sit there and you have to Screw around until you master that weapon. It's not going to tell you how to do anything. Like, um, it just recently... Like the real world. <laughs> it just recently moved to the consoles after it had been on the uh, 3DS, you know, for the past couple of games. And so since Monster Hunter 4... They put it out on the Switch too, didn't they? Um, no. Hmm. I don't know why they didn't. I feel like they would, but... It feels like you would. There was this weapon in it. I had been using that weapon since that game. I just recently figured out in Monster Hunter World, oh... There's an attack I did not know existed. And I've been <laughs> using the same weapon for three games. So, <laughs> if that says anything about teaching you how to do anything. Hmm. Or like, you know, there's it's just... It's like, what, you want the game to wipe your ass too? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know some of my friends are so into gaming that they they not only will buy the new big game or whatever as soon as it comes out, but they'll also like spend hours watching YouTube videos mm. of like professional gamers play this game so that they are more prepared yeah. at mm. playing the game, which I, I feel like it's just like... It kind of ruins it a little for me. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I like the discovery wait. of a game. You know, like mm -hmm. a great game I like to discover. Uh, another thing the kids are playing these days, the, the Dragon Ball Fighter. There's some yeah. kind of a Dragon Ball Fighter game. I've heard you it's play awesome. that. I got that one. Yeah, yeah you do, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I love Dragon Ball Z. Like, that is... My favorite. I saw probably five episodes of the old Dragon Ball uh, cartoon, yeah. and that was just it for me. I, well, you got about two hundred ninety. Yeah, that's more. that's yeah. old school. <laughs> I never got into Dragon Ball. Like I, it was one of those things where I would come home from school and I'd like have my TV on, I'd be playing on my computer, and it would be on because I would have it on Cartoon Network. Yeah. But Tsunami. I, I did not care about that show at all. And I had so many friends who loved it, and and you know I'd try to watch a show, and it would just like the pacing on it was so god awful. Well, it that's was. why it has so many episodes. It's because the Dragon Ball Z anime mm -hmm. frequently caught up with the manga. Mm -hmm. So instead of so they had to have an episode of ah instead of diverging, <laughs> they would put in filler arcs. Yeah. So like they could keep making it, and then that's also yeah why they have that prolonged screaming because in the mangas it's just an instant power up right but you know they can they can spread that one fight across three episodes yeah. instead of one and book the, and right. that but that's also like the 10 minute recap like last time on dragon ball z well, vegeta and goku and I other said, like, like I, said, I watched five episodes the first one kind of drew me in because i was like oh it's an epic like yeah. find these hidden masterful things each one you find makes you a little bit more of a badass or whatever and if you collect them all you become the ultimate badass or whatever <laughs> pokemon <laughs> master and so i was like <laughs> i was like all right cool i'll watch them i'll watch them and then they're like meeting new people and making friends for their quest and i was like all right all right cool and they're like oh this is gonna be a bad guy we're gonna have to deal with this bad guy he's been collecting dragon balls too boom they find the bad guy they f begin fighting the bad guy. Uh, that's four, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then literally, I watch one dude power up for 21 and a half minutes. Well, <laughs> if it makes you feel better, that fight you're talking about is, I think, the longest anime fight in history. 
as it has a screen time of either four to six hours. Wow. Oh my god. It's, yeah, Goku versus or either it's Goku Piccolo. versus Frieza. No, uh, uh, Piccolo and Drag. You're talking about Dragon Ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're talking about Dragon, in Dragon Ball. Ball. That's you're talking about a Piccolo fight. Yeah, because in Dragon Ball Z, the, the entire fight with Frieza is around six hours. I believe it. No, no, this this was only okay. probably about hours. an hour, an <laughs> hour long. But still, to to stretch it out over two episodes, and you lost me. I was. Yeah. I well, I mean, you get like the... you get like the last fifteen minutes of the previous episode at the beginning of the next episode. <laughs> yeah, there's only seven minutes left, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> if you ah! <laughs> I'm going to scream even louder. And then eventually ah! the earth is destroyed. Yep. That's how like it ends or yeah. whatever. They're His like, power levels reached 4,000! What? Now, my issue ah! with Dragon Ball in gaming is that, as far as I know, the only thing they've done with Dragon Ball in gaming is tournament fighters. And, and no uh, sandbox, right? Like As far as I know, no. I feel like for as many people as did watch the Dragon Ball and the remake with Dragon and Ball Z. still watch them, I'm sure. And I think there's like a tertiary going. Dragon Ball yeah. as well. Yes. Dragon Ball GT. XY. GT. No, we don't, we don't talk about GT. <laughs> oh. G oh, we don't do that? No. Okay, that's um, good. <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody wants to see a, a Goku. No, but there is the one. It's um, Dragon Ball Super. That's the one that's going on right now. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so with all the, all of that fan base, you would figure that just creating like a party of these characters rather than in a fighting style game yeah. and then like sandbox. Make like an RPG or something out of it. And go out and find the Dragon Balls. Yeah. Like, I feel like an right? RPG would be really cool, but I think, you know, going back to that whole nostalgia thing, what has been driving Dragon Ball Z games and this like they kind of keep building on each other, you know, like. Dragon Ball Z led to the Dragon Ball game, and, mm -hmm. you know, interest kind of died out, but then people really liked this, so it brought in interest for more Dragon Ball Z, which led to more games, and they kind of stacked on each other. But the kids who watch Dragon Ball, the people who are playing these games, watched it for the fighting and loved the fighting, so they're like, I want to fight like Goku, I want to do all this, and... I mean, you could do... They're, they're great fighting games. Like, mm -hmm. in terms of, like, keeping it true to the style of fighting and the style of the anime, like, it is a completely, like, open stadium or, you know, uh, stage platform or whatever. You can fly in every direction. You can knock people onto different planets and stuff like that. Like, mm. it's very engaging as a fighter yeah. because you're not just... That side scrolling fight, you know, duck move. Duck Especially move. with the uh, newest one that came out, the Dragon Ball Fighter Z, it's got like, a, I guess a, they describe it as a two and a half D feel to it. So like, it's still three D, but it's like you got the side scrolling, and like it just gives you this really, really realistic flight to the anime fights because like they use the cell shading, so it mm -hmm. looks like the anime. You're like, it looks like you're playing the anime. That's awesome, and it's it's so like. Cause like the way they do it is so incredibly done. Cause like you can just go into these combos like like um, because I've had, I've had other Dragon Ball Z games and it's just like, oh yeah, press this. You know, you're just gonna do your attack. But like you can just go into these chains and like, it feels like the anime. You know, I'll be like fighting and then I'll go into like this super special move and I have a cutscene and like he'll power up and I'm like, oh my god, this is like I'm watching this show. This is awesome. Ha! Huh? Yeah. For someone who who really enjoys the show, I understand that these are these are awesome games, but. I got burned out on tournament fighters back when like Tekken Five came out. <laughs> well, here's here's an interesting mix, and and I may be the only human being that's ever played this, but I don't know if y'all know, but there was a Mortal Kombat role playing game <laughs> where I did not know that. where you could actually it was kind of sandbox style. You would go around. There was like coins to collect for currency and stuff. Uh, and whenever you would engage an enemy mm. on the in the world, instead, it would take you to a Mortal Kombat fight. Okay. Uh, it's sort of like the old Final Fantasies, where you have Final like the over the Final over the Fantasy time. Legends. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> no, no, like, like the Final old, Fantasy, like the old <laughs> Final Fantasy, where you have the over the top walk around the world, and then like do 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 do, you'd spin oh, okay. down or whatever, and pff, dun, 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 it would pop up the the yeah. side. Fight or you, whatever. You fight, fight the monster, monster that battle. showed up. Yeah. Right. Except this time, instead of like just picking from sub menus or whatever, you actually fight Street Fighter or uh, Mortal Kombat style. Mm -hmm. And so you can play as, you know, Sub Zero or whatever, and like go through and yeah, and do that kind of thing. That's but, cool. So I, I feel like they're they could do a lot 
with what they have out there, and and I guess maybe they just I don't know don't want to don't want to don't want to. Well, that brings it to the uh, end of the show. Huh. Well, this was a fun-filled hour of nerdery. It was. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Jason, what'd you learn? I learned. Um... Justin, what'd you learn? <laughs> I learned that Jeremy Adam is a an avid gamer because just about every game that we mentioned, he already has. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going over to his house and playing video games. Oh right. well, yeah, Jeremy Adam. I learned that Mortal Kombat Yadam, had an Yadam. RPG. <laughs> what? I learned that Mortal Kombat had an RPG. Yeah. Talk about the last thing that we talked about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a Jason move. Yeah, Jason? <laughs> huh? I learned that uh, Elon Musk put a car into the ore belt. Or ore cloud. cloud. Ore cloud. Yeah. I'm trying to say orbit there. <laughs> no, or, I thought it was, I, I'm thinking asteroid belt and ore cloud was, and I put them together. You ore belt. Mm -hmm. The asteroid cloud. Or ore. Or, or, or. <laughs> or, or, or. Jason? Huh? What'd you learn? I didn't. Cool. Nice. Right. Well, uh, I guess that's going to bring to a close then. Hmm. What a climactic and engaging ending to the show. You yeah. know. Thanks, Jason. No problem. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night, night, everybody. everybody.